I'm very anxious to hand this over to Bill, but uh, I want to just say uh, one thing, and that is, in addition to all the qualities that have been described in these, the film and in other speakers, one of the most important things in my mind that he is doing is to recognize the trauma that takes place in the families of our soldiers, sailors, and airmen who are making so many repeated trips to the battle areas now. They are the ones that need support. We've, uh, we're, we're giving good support to our troops, but he is recognizing the problems that the families have, and I just want to add my personal thanks to him for that. And it's with a great deal of pride, pleasure, and uh, humility that I present this William J. Donovan Award to this fine sailor <laughs> from an old soldier. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, General Singlob, thank you very much for those kind words. And, and anyone who has spent time around the intelligence community or the soft world knows about Jack Singlob. If ever there was a man who embodied the courage, the integrity, and the feistiness of Bill Donovan, it is General Singlob. Major General Singlob is the personification of the OSS. And time, clearly, has not taken away any of those virtues. To the men and women of the OSS Society, I can't thank you enough for this tremendous honor. To be in the ranks of such distinguished public servants and military heroes is humbling and an honor that I will cherish forever. But I would like to go off script here uh, for just a few minutes and recognize a few other men who have been instrumental in my success and in the success of SOF. Many of you are probably aware that Deputy Secretary of Defense Ash Carter will be leaving the Department of Defense this December. This will be an incredible loss for the military. Ash is universally respected by both the uniformed members and the civilians within the Department of Defense. Throughout the past four years, Ash first as the Undersecretary for Acquisition, Technology, and Logistics, and then as the Deputy Secretary, has been one of SOF's strongest supporters. His common sense and steady hand gave everyone in the Department of Defense confidence in our leadership. We could not have been successful without his personal involvement. Ash, thank you very much for your support and friendship over these many years. Thank you. And I also want to recognize my great friends in the intelligence community. Uh, Director of National Intelligence, uh, Jim Clapper, who joined us last night for a small gathering. I can think of no one no better man to lead this nation's intelligence team than Jim Clapper. His leadership, his judgment, his willingness to work with everyone in the intelligence community has fundamentally changed how we conduct intelligence operations. Jim, as always, thanks for your support to me and special operations. And Director John Brennan. John and I have known each other for a few years now. And having worked with John during some of the most challenging times in our nation's fight against terrorism, I can say, without hesitation, that John Brennan has done more to protect this nation than anyone I know. During his tenure as the President's advisor on CT, he led the nation's intelligence, law enforcement, and soft CT efforts with a steady hand, a clear eye, an uncompromising sense of integrity and personal character that have been the hallmark of his long and distinguished career. John, thanks for your friendship and mentorship. The agency is in incredibly good hands. On the defense side of the intelligence community, my two very good friends, Mike Vickers and Mike Flynn. We have been close allies for a long time, 
and the Department of Defense and the men and women of SOF have been incredibly well served by your experience, your passion, and your leadership. Thank you always for being there for me and for the SOF community. Mike, thanks. Mike, thanks a lot. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if Direc Director Tish Long of the NGA is here tonight, but her leadership of this incredibly important agency has been ins uh, inspirational. And like so many of her colleagues, her partnership with the special operations community has been instrumental to our success. And finally, I know he is not able to join us tonight, but I also want to recognize my fellow combatant commander and great friend, Keith Alexander of the National Security Agency. I can tell you from personal experience that no one in the military works as hard as Keith to protect this great nation and to protect its civil liberties. Keith Alexander is one of my personal heroes, and every success, every success we have had in SOF over the past 12 years has been directly related to the work of the NSA and those tremendous public servants. Keith, thank you very, very much. I would also like to recognize the previous recipients of the Donovan Award who are joining us here tonight, my good, good friend, Admiral Eric Olson, and of course, Jack Singlob. Gentlemen, it is an honor to join your ranks. Charles Pink, as always, thank you for your strong leadership of the OSS Society. Without you and the board members to guide this very unique organization, the legacy of our forefathers in the intelligence and soft world might be lost to history. Thank you. 20 years ago, when I was conducting research for my thesis on special operations, I came across several archived reports about the OSS. I was fascinated by the boldness of Bill Donovan, the ingenuity of his staff, the courage of his field operators, and most importantly, the strategic success of this small band of glorious amateurs. There was something mythical about the OSS. The handmade knives, the hidden derringers, poison darts, self-contained diving rigs, and a saboteur's black bag of tricks. Old photos of men and women smoking unfiltered cigarettes. <laughs> Bottles of whiskey perched on large wooden desks as they planned secret missions long into the night. Spies who wore lipstick and tight uniforms, double agents from Hollywood and Wall Street, citizen soldiers and the intellectual elite, all who gave up everything to be part of a cause, the cause of freedom. In 1991, as I worked on my thesis, I wondered where those glory days had gone. And with my soft colleagues at the Naval Postgraduate School, we lamented the loss of a bygone era. For the next 20 years, I would often hear disillusioned young officers and non-commissioned officers ask, why aren't we more like the OSS? Why aren't we more like the OSS? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here tonight to tell you that the OSS is back. <laughs> not since World War II, not since World War II has there been such a lethal combination of intelligence officers and special operations warriors. Not since the fight against Hitler have we had such a talented group of government civilians, intellectuals, businessmen, writers, philosophers, engineers, tinkers, tailors, soldiers, and spies. Not since Bill Donovan first conceived of an intelligence organization with global reach has the community of professional agents and commandos been this strong. Today on the global battlefield, SOF and the intelligence community stands as brothers in arms. Separate organizations bound by a common history, a common founder, a common sense of purpose to protect Americans around the globe. For the past 12 years in every war zone, declared and undeclared, I have had the privilege of working side by side with my intelligent counterparts. There is no finer group of prof professionals in the world. Their commitment to protect the American people is unsurpassed. And the stars on the walls of CIA headquarters and the pictures of our fallen at DIA and NSA, and FBI, and DEA, and NGA are proof positive of that sacrifice. But still, there will be some who doubt this resurgence. So let me put those doubts to rest. The OSS was known for its innovation, its creative technology, its bold missions, and above all, its incredibly diverse and talented people. In 1943, it was these incredible agents who were instrumental and smoothing the way for the US and British amphibious landings at Salerno and for the safe pass passage 
of Colonel William O. Darby and his American Rangers. In 2001, CIA agents on the ground in Afghanistan linked up with the 5th Special Forces Group and together with their partisans of the Northern Alliance, they mounted horses and overthrew an entrenched Taliban government. From 2003 to 2010, SOF from every service partnered with intelligence agents on the ground in Iraq to build the Sons of Iraq and hunt down the deck of 50 high-value targets. Today, across Afghanistan and the Horn of Africa, a handful of incredibly bold and innovative soft and intelligence officers are building networks of allies to help rid their nation of this extremist threat. In 1943, Dr. James Lambertson designed the Lambertson Amphibious Respiratory Unit, or the LARU. It was a revolutionary means to insert agents across the beach, and they also inserted by parachutes clepper canoes, submarines, and with them they carried Sten guns and silenced pistols and new explosives made with, a, with plastique. Well, today, we have boats that go on the water and under the water. We have big planes and little planes and littler planes. We have submarines and mini subs. We have scuba rigs that would make Lambertson proud and jet boots to propel us underwater. We have jet skis and kayaks. We have motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles. We have high-definition sensors that look like rocks. We have tags and tracking devices. We tweet and Google and Bing. <laughs> we are building an Iron Man suit that will test the limits of technology and entrepreneurship. We operate in the mountains of Afghanistan, the deserts of North Africa, the jungles of Asia. We are masters of our environment, skiing with the Norwegians, diving with the Italians, and rucking in the outback of Australia. We have a brotherhood of soft allies that extend across the globe. In 1944, the OSS, operating with their French colleagues, helped sabotage the Nazi lines of communications prior to Operation Overlord, the Allied invasion of Normandy. At every turn in the war, the OSS was there, gathering vital intelligence, rescuing downed airmen, from occupied France, conducting sabotage to disrupt and delay the enemy. Their role in the success of World War II is legendary. Today, one only has to look at the papers to see the success of our missions. But behind the news, there are real people. Some of the most dedicated, creative, courageous young men and women the nation has ever seen. And they come from all walks of life. They are New Yorkers and Texans, big city and small towns. They are Ivy League and community college. They are bankers and lawyers, poets and musicians, geeks and old school. They are officers and enlisted, uniformed and suits. They speak Farsi and Pashto, Dari and Arabic, Somali and Chinese, Hangul and Tagalog. We have foreign soldiers in our ranks and foreigners who are American soldiers. We have names that resonate with history like the Jedbergs and the Raiders. And together with our partners in the intelligence and law enforcement community, we have combined to pull off some of the most incredible missions of our day. Just ask Americans Jessica Buchanan and Richard Phillips, or go to Gitmo and see the men who are no longer threats to this nation. In the 1940s, the OSS was fighting the scourge of Nazism and fascism. Today, we are fighting extremism of another type an intolerance, a bigotry, a medieval mindset that doesn't recognize any civility. And it is international, and it is a threat to our global humanity. As a result, today the intelligence, law enforcement, and defense communities stand as vanguards of our security, fighting this barbarism as far away from our shores as we can engage them. Like the OSS before us, wherever there is tyranny, and injustice, we will be there. Wherever a petty dictator seeks to oppress the downtrodden, we will be there. Wherever the weak need uplifting, we will be there. Wherever there is a threat to this great nation, we will be there. We will be there because that is what Bill Donovan would expect. We will be there because that is what the men and women of the OSS would expect. And we will be there because that is what the American people would expect and we will not let them down. From the men and women,
from the men and women of the intelligence and special operations community who are the true recipients of this award, I want to thank you again for this tremendous honor. May God bless you, and may God bless America. Thank you very much.